because so I that's see a, good, a big spending wave coming. That's a good hunting ground. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, we had, by the way, uh, Nitin Rakesh, uh, yeah. Nigel, in the morning yeah. with us, yeah. uh, Sonia. Uh, yeah. He he was of course with emphasis now, but he, I asked him whether he wants to wear his old market hat. And I asked him whether he would buy IT stocks. He was, he was in, of course, he's got skin uh -huh. in the game, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the answer isn't the affirmative. But he was very clear. He said this is a secular, structural kind of story, yes. and Indian IT uh, will continue to do very well. Uh, you know, I want to just uh, point out a few headlines now, and it, and I did this with uh, China. I mean, with the negative press that China has been getting over the last uh, many months, and I put out a few headlines the last time uh, on this program. I want to put out the positive headlines that India is getting uh, in the global press now. You know, there are various ways to read it, right? People say, well, we've seen the story play out before uh, and uh, it's, not, it's not good news because it's getting so much publicity, uh, peak bullishness, etc. But for what it's worth, let me just quickly tell you, because the optimism from FIS has been super strong. The numbers are on your screen. FIS in the last three months have put in 75,000 crores in terms of uh, money into the market. And, you know, month so far has been almost 20,000 crores. In June, it was 27,000 crores. In May, it was 28,000 crores as well. So we are talking some very, very large numbers. <coughs> On to the clippings, right? And I'm and, and just not even looking at uh, beyond this one week, actually maybe one and a half weeks or so in terms of what we picked up. Capital International, one of the big kind of uh, global funds, the bluest of blue chip names with a substantial amount of investment in India, put out this essay which they titled, Would India be the breakout emerging market uh, of this decade? Uh, there was Martin Wolf, who's the famous columnist at uh, Financial Times, uh, who asked this, not asked, but he basically opined that Western leaders are making a sensible bet on India. Uh, Bernstein put out a note basically reviewing uh, the decade under Prime Minister Modi and the reforms that the country has seen. Uh, there was a headline at a G20, I mean, out of uh, Gandhinagar, where uh, you know, the World Bank chief basically said that uh, uh, he's most bullish in India in a long time. And to kind of wrap this up, uh, out of the Harvard Business Review, which basically looks at, uh, you know, business strategy, etc., there was an article which I picked up, which was interesting. They said, does your company have an India strategy? <laughs> a lot of India, right? I mean, India is the hot headline in that sense. You didn't say, uh, uh, this is India's decade. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you, by the way, today EPFR put out a note, uh, actually it was JP Morgan which was using EPFR data and they said uh, that uh, India remains the highest net bought emerging market YTD among those that report weekly data. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's how you look at it, right? Because at least for me, I've also seen this play out in 2007 as you have and many of us have here in. But the difference is China was still the predominant player. There was no... Now there's no love loss for China. That is the sense that one picks uh, when one speaks to people. And the second is uh, manufacturing seems to be more, it, it seems to be a real thing, right? We are yeah. seeing that happen on the yeah. ground with PLI, real incentives, etc. Yeah. Would you agree, briefly? Yeah, I think there's 